this episode, we're going to go over a trailhead check that you can use every day before you go out into the field with your friends. And we're also going to go over the steps of a beacon search if you have to perform a rescue in the field. Quick and easy trailhead check I like to do with my friends before we head out into the backcountry is just circle up, take our beacons out, turn them on together, make sure that we have enough battery power for the day. Uh, and then we'll go to search and send and make sure that our beacon's operating properly and that we're all picking each other up. I also like to do a quick visual inspection of my probe and shovel and just make sure I have my handle and my blade and that my probe looks like it's functioning properly. And then we'll send someone down the trailhead about 100 feet and they will go to search and everybody else will take their beacon, put it on send for the day and skin or snowmobile past slowly spread out about 40, 40 feet or so between each person. And that just ensures that everybody before they head out is sending a signal and we can pick them up if they're buried underneath the snow. So in case of an avalanche, what the search would maybe look like is there'd be a couple people up top, maybe two folks up top, one person's caught in the avalanche. You're gonna wanna yell avalanche first thing just to let that person know that there is an avalanche and maybe they can ski out of it or snowmobile to the side. If they're caught in the avalanche, then we're just watching them until we can't see them anymore. They might disappear and that's what we call the last scene point. So what we wanna do at this time is if we have a lot of people, assign someone to call up for outside help. Whether it's with your satellite texting device or your phone or whatever means, you can get outside help on the way. Because if you get that person out of the snow and they're alive, they're gonna be maybe injured or very cold at the very least. So then once we've decided that the scene is safe and we can enter the slope safely, we're gonna all go to search with our beacons. So this part of the search is called our signal search. This is the first part of the search. There's the signal search, looking for the signal. There's the course search, when you find the signal, following that signal on your beacon. And then there's the find search, that's within 10 meters. When we take our skis or snowboard off, we get off our snowmobile and we start slowing down our search and really pinpointing where that beacon is and finding the smallest number. The main thing is that we don't wanna get below the person because it takes a lot longer to get back up. So we wanna make sure that we really thoroughly cover all that debris from the last scene point. Head out, we're making sure that we're not leaving space greater than 15 meters to the side of the debris or 30 meters between each person. And then you might be able to go right downhill and cover that width. If not, you can switch back, back and forth and you just need to be really communicating with your partners and letting them know when you get a signal or what you're seeing. So in the signal search, we're switchbacking the debris, making sure we're not leaving those spaces. We're looking at our beacon, but we're also looking and scanning for any objects we might see. If we see a ski boot or a helmet sticking out of the snow, we might want to go right to that spot. And we're waiting for our beacon to pick up the signal. Once our beacon picks up the signal, then we're on to the second part of the search, and that's the course search. We're notifying other searchers that we have a signal and we're pointing the direction. So it might be something like this. 55 meters this way, simple as that. And then you're just following your beacon. It's gonna take you on flux lines. And flux lines are just the signal that the buried beacon is sending. And they're not straight all the time, they're curved. So if your beacon's bringing you in on a curve, that's, that's typical. And you just wanna make sure that your numbers are going down and you're headed in the general right direction. And when we're on this court search, we're still moving pretty quickly because 55 meters is a long distance. So we wanna be moving through the terrain quickly, but also making sure that our numbers are going down and we're orienting that center light or center arrow so it's flashing and we're just following that signal in. I'm still moving pretty quickly. It doesn't have to be exact. If the arrow goes off a little bit, I just slightly correct till I get to about 10 meters. And then I'm on to the third part of my search. I asked Kevin to take out his shovel and probe and I told him I was gonna continue with the fine search. Uh, what I was doing at this point is I'm just taking off my skis or I'm getting off my snowmobile and I'm starting to move slower. I'm getting lower to the ground. I'm trying to keep my beacon oriented downhill and I'm following the numbers in. At about three meters, those arrows will disappear. And what you're doing is you're just on an X, Y axis and you're just trying to find that lowest number on your beacon. It's not gonna be zero. If it were zero, they'd be on the surface of the snow. 
I'm gonna grab the probe from Kevin, or Kevin's gonna probe right there. I'm gonna mark that spot if I'm alone. I'm gonna take out my shovel and probe, and then I'm gonna probe right there. It's really important to practice with your beacon and know that your partners practice with their equipment. And just getting an idea for how fast you can move in these different parts of the search. And then also just putting your shovel and probe together. It's all things that when emotions are running high and if your friend is buried under the snow, you don't want to have to think about this. This, this needs to be second nature. These videos are great information, they're a start, but they're definitely not a replacement for an avalanche course. I recommend taking an avalanche course. You'll go over um, rescue techniques, uh, you'll go over the snowpack and avoiding avalanches, and it's really, if you're gonna be in the backcountry recreating this year, I highly recommend taking an avalanche course with you and your friends before you head out into the field.